In this movie, we'll take a look at something called layer binding. Just before this, in the preceding movie, we were looking at the automatic binding that takes place in anime. When you create a skeleton or a bone structure, the objects in that layer automatically are bound to it and flex accordingly. This is a different option that allows you to connect geometry in a way that will be very useful later on when you start doing complex things like facial expressions. And let me show you exactly what I mean. It'll simply make more sense that way. We'll come back to our layer here. We're hiding one of the bones layers right now from the earlier, and that's the, the diving board that we were first doing our bones work on. Now we have our one that we changed from flexible binding to region binding. Now we're going to go ahead and do layer binding. These all are related. They all kind of touch each other a little bit, but they all have slightly different functions. Layer binding is the one that is most significantly different from region and flexible binding. Let me show you what I mean. The layer binding tool is over here in the lower left-hand corner of the bones section of the tools palette. Now, it's not highlighted, and you may be looking over here at the layers palette going, what is wrong with this thing? Why do I have the bones layer selected, but I can't access all the tools? The reason is some of these things are accessible only when you happen to have the drawing layer selected, then they become selected for a reason that I'll show you right here. I'm going to go ahead and switch to the bone manipulation tool and change a couple of things. I had just started touching on this in the last movie, and that is this area of influence. There's a tool right over here that is a bone with this little halo going around it on the left side of the screen. If you select that, by clicking and dragging on any bone, you can change, you can grow or diminish the influence this bone has over the geometry or the shapes that it controls. Usually, when you're starting to work with characters, or in this case, a diving board that has many bones as part of it, You'll want to reduce the influence a little bit so you can get some nice breaks as this bends. I've reduced these now just to make it easier when we do our layer binding. Well, let me come back down to our diving board layer, the vector art layer in the layers palette, lower right hand corner. We'll see now the bones tool over here in the tools palette is available, the bind layer tool. And we have something else here called bind points. I don't know that I'll go over this one unless well, we'll actually be using it in one of our upcoming lessons. But you can select very specifically which points you want bound to a bone. Yeah, we'll do that on a needs basis right here because typically you don't use that except for doing extreme details in fingers or something. Let's take a look at the bind layer tool. I'll select this tool and I'm going to pick a bone right in the middle of our diving board here and click on it. It turns red. It looks like nothing has changed. Let's do something else now. I'll come back over here to the oval tool, keyboard shortcut L. And on this layer we've got, the diving board layer, I'm going to draw a circle holding the shift key down so that we get a perfect circle like a beach ball right here on the end. We've got some very fine lines to view. I'm going to go ahead and change my display quality so we can see a little bit better what's going on by turning on anti-aliasing. just makes the lines thicker to see. Oh, and I accidentally drew a very, very tiny oval down there. So let me go ahead and use my quick selection tool, keyboard shortcut G. That's highlighted, and I will delete that. We'll come back now to our bones, and I'm going to use the influence bone tool. If I grab the bone out at the end and pull it down, you'll notice nothing is really happening to the board. However, if I drag it up and down, we see the board starting to rock around the center of the board. What is going on is that this bind layer function we enabled with this bone right here is now making sure that all the artwork on this layer is behaving to this bone specifically. So if I grab this bone right here and rock it like this, the ball stays right on the board. If I grab the next bone over and flex that, we're not getting much going on right there. You might say, well, this, this seems rather odd. How, you know, what's the advantage to this? The advantage to this is that when we start creating faces and heads and we want to bind everything on the layer, say, example, mouths. We might use something we haven't looked at yet called switch layers, where you have different mouths, but you want them to always be in the same place on the character. 
the bind to layer with the bones. Make sure that the mouth is always in the same place, even though you might be moving the head with the head bone. So it's an easy way to connect that, not have any distortion, not having the objects bend out of the ordinary and stay exactly where you want them. So there's a quick look at the bind layer function. In our next movie, we'll go ahead and start working with constraints and how those work with bones to make it easier on you for more and more complex animations.